Hey guys, here we go into round three. And first, I'd like to say that uh, all rights to the video belong to uh, HBO. They own the video. Um, the use, the making of this video and putting it on YouTube is covered under the Fair Use Act for commentary purposes, scrutiny, uh, and educational purposes. Um, so yeah, we're going to go into round three. And for those of you that are new to the channel, have never watched a video of mine, um, what I'm trying to do is look for the ways that Glovkin sets up his punches and the way that he defends himself um, when he's out of position and also uh, when his opponents are punching him um, or punching at him. Um, and then I'm going to look for ways that, you know, I already did some film study on, on uh, Canelo uh, when he fought uh, Liam Smith. And we're going to take the ideas that I have about those two fights. And at the end, we're going to kind of mash them together and figure out, you know, what kind of style Golovkin is going to fight. You know, it's, excuse me, it's really interesting because against Danny Jacobs, he fought a very measured fight, very measured and tactical fight. Um, I thought that he could have stopped Jacobs. In my opinion, I thought he could have turned it up and fought him hard whenever he wanted. But Jacobs is a big guy, so I could be wrong. Um, against Brooke, he's fighting kind of a self-proclaimed street fight. You know, he kind of attacks. He doesn't set his punches up super well. Um, and Brooke is doing a good job fighting that style. Um, and making, you know, a case for, for some of the rounds being close. But then there's also the fight where he fought David Lemieux. Um, in which he beat the living shit out of David Lemieux. Um, and David Lemieux didn't even get a close round. Like, there was no chance. Like, nobody in their right mind could give David Lemieux one of those rounds. Um, and he just completely shut him out. And it's interesting because I think Canelo might actually be, you know, David Lemieux 2.0. You know, he's a little bit faster. I don't. He definitely does not hit as hard as Golovkin, or as, as hard as David Lemieux. Canelo doesn't. Um... But, like, I don't even want to say, like, similar boxing style, you know, but limited in, in offense. Um, but David Lemieux is a very good fighter. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, I know that he doesn't have, like, maybe the greatest record or whatever, but David Lemieux is a very good fighter. And I would not actually have been upset if, if David Lemieux fought Canelo before Golovkin did. Um, I think that would have been a great fight, personally. Um, but anyway... We're going to look at this fight, and we're trying to break down the skills and the talents that Golovkin uses to, to land his punches and defend himself. And um, uh, we'll see how we think that the, the fight between him and Canelo is going, to have, is going to go at the end of it. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, Brooke, you know, not using the jab in this instance. You know, he knows he doesn't want to throw the jab on the line with Golovkin because uh, Golovkin li likes to counter it. And then, again, he's, like, watch how he takes his turn and then stops on the line. And very predictably, um, Golovkin shoots his jab. I think he catches Brooke off guard. I think Brooke thought that he might be able to catch him with the, with the left hook before, um, or he was trying to time his jab. Um, but it doesn't really work out in Brooke's favor at the moment. Ooh. Whoa. Uh, what happened here, you guys? So off of that... Shoots the jab, shuffles forward. Ooh, a double jab from Golovkin. Brooke is moving, trying to get out of uh, harm's way. Does his little shuffle forward and duck. And then, interesting that Golovkin doesn't actually throw his right hand, but he still shifts his weight to his left leg. Then as Brooke is taking angles, and this is beautiful boxing from Golovkin. Uh, Brooke as well, but... Let's get back into it. So, doesn't throw the right hand. Follows Brooke. Ducks down. Come on. A little too slow, right? Shifts forward and then gets Brooke to get out of position, right? And then catches him with that left hook. You know, and the reason he's able to get him out of position is because there's so much danger for all these punches, right? So, he faints him, makes him think there's a right hand right there. Now, Brooke has to worry about the left hand coming. But he doesn't throw the left hand, but Brooks still gets out of position to where he thinks, it, like, where it could have gone, and he ducks it. But Golovkin, you know, changes the arc on his punch or sees that where Brooks putting his head, you know, just a great job from, from Mr. Golovkin in this instance and catches him with that right, with that left hook uh, and then follows him through, you know. And it's interesting because 
people would point to the knockdown not being, or this knockdown not being a real knockdown because their feet tangle up. You know, but if you look at their feet, they, they're not really tangling up. You know, I think it was just a case of Brooke getting so far off of balance uh, and kind of going down, but still being like a knockdown. You know, I don't think Brooke is hurt at all, but um, Golovkin thinks so. <laughs> so Golovkin comes in, shoots the jab, ducks the, what, what could have been a, like a jab counter, right, or a right hand or whatever, but it winds up being a left hook instead, and uh, off of that, you know, kind of predictable, right, Golovkin throws the right hand, you know, Brooke doing a good job of reading it, you know, he's seen it a few times, and what does he do? He turns off the line, right, beautiful, and gets away from the shot. Mm. Then Golovkin goes, comes in, does the same thing. And Brooke has kind of seen it a few times now, and he's starting to pick up how he's going to be able to counter that technique and lands a good, a good jab on Golovkin. I wonder if Canelo will be able to do the same thing. You know, I think that Brooke has really great eyes, um, and he sees punches, like, unusually well for the sport. Um, so I'm not super sure, in my opinion. Ooh. Good job right there of Brooke controlling him. Controls his, his arm so he doesn't land that punch. Ooh. Lands a good jab. Again, Brooke getting complacent. He knows that once he stops on the on the line, Golovkin's gonna shoot a jab and try to get him to keep moving. You know? And it's interesting too because if we go back to the knockdown, right? Maybe that's exactly the style of fight that Golovkin wants his opponents to fight, right? Maybe he doesn't even want them on the ropes, but he wants them constantly moving and changing angles. And that's why every time he gets Brooke uh, on the line, or Brooke stops to be on the line, he shoots a hard jab, you know, because he wants him moving. Oh, beautiful boxing. So, feints him. Like, and normally, Golovkin would shoot a jab with this, right? He ducks his head down, right? And then he would throw the right hand over the top, but this time he adjusts it and throws a right uppercut instead. Beautiful boxing from Golovkin. I love it. Uh, Brooke does wind up getting his glove in front of it, if you see his uh, right glove, gets it in front of his face. Might hit Brooke on the shoulder, you know, or be like a grazing blow. But um, nothing super solid. And then right after that shot, Brooke control or Kolovkin controls him, brings him up, and then tries to land that, that left hand. But Brooke has his hands up and isn't able to, and Golovkin isn't able to land a shot. Then right into it. Fake right hand, or left hand, ducks down. Brooke thinks it's going to be another shot up. And lands like a left, a right hand to the body. You know, so now Golovkin varying that technique, right? Where he shoots the jab, ducks down. So he's throwing an uppercut off of it. Now he's throwing a right hand to the body because Brooke has such good head movement. And I can't really tell if that lands. It doesn't matter. It's the fact that he's varying his offense so much that makes it hard for his opponent to set traps and be and time and to uh, counter because he doesn't know exactly what's going to be coming. And I think that Brooke is, you know, not necessarily getting tired, but kind of gets stuck on the ropes. So he gives him like a right hand probe right there that he tries to block, uh, which is not a real punch, right? It's just a probe. And that allows him to set those other punches up, you know, kind of tap, 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 and then get to the body. Uh, and Brooke does a good job of getting off the ropes, even though he kind of gets hit with that left hand. Uh, he knows he doesn't need to stay there for any more punishment. But um, get him on the ropes, and beautiful, beautiful. So controls his head with that one, throws the right uppercut, immediately goes to control him. Fake right hand, gets Brooke to... to Gets Brooke out of position, and then Brooke ducks down to get away from what he thought was the next shot, and walks right into a a left hand. Boom! Beautiful boxing from Golovkin, and the icing on the cake after it controls him with his elbow, and turns off the line. You know, and this is interesting because this is why I think that that Canelo is going to have such a hard time fighting Golovkin, um, is because. Golovkin is so good at not just fighting you when you're on the ropes, but fighting you at all points in the ring, you know, after he throws punches. So, number one, Canelo likes to counterpunch, right? 
Is he going to be countering shots like this, right? That fake right hand that just gets you out of position so you can land that left hook. And then after he throws the shot, he controls you, right? So he's going to push you off balance. He's going to, he's going to stop you from being able to set up your counters, right? And then he also moves off the line, changing his position. You know, and that's all going to be stuff that's very difficult for Canelo to, um, to land counters through. And uh, this is interesting too. This is, um, I just want to point this out for those of you that are new, right? This is not a real punch from Brooke, right? He throws that left hook and then he just uses it to turn off and get off the ropes. That's not a real punch. Um, that's the same thing that Danny Jacobs was doing. Danny Jacobs would come in and slap with a punch. But when you're the, when you're the other fighter, you have to respect it because you don't always know. Oh, sometimes it might be a punch. Sometimes he might be setting up offense. Sometimes he might be. Right? But it, in this instance, it's just so that he can create space so he can get out of the corner. So he throws a left hook. Golovkin has to respect that it's a left hook. Right? Maybe he shoots a jab instead. He counters it if he's ready for it. Right? But it, you, he's only doing it so that he can get off the line and, and get to a safer area in the, in the ropes or in the ring. Beautiful boxing from Brooke here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So gets on the line and shoots a right hand. Right? Now, it doesn't land, right? But it's, it's, it's two different mind, you know, mind games with Golovkin. Number one, he sits on the line. And what is that supposed to do? That's supposed to trigger Golovkin to throwing a jab, right? That's what Golovkin has been known to do. And he does it right off this, like, little timing right here where he's moving his foot. He kind of steps down. And then he'll, like, take that extra step to shoot the jab. So Brooke is timing that. And he's hoping that Golovkin is going to shoot that jab right here. Another thing that it does is, for the most part, Brooke has almost exclusively been throwing left hands from, from this position where he gets onto the line. So it's, it is, it's allowing him to change up the rhythm uh, and to throw a punch that Golovkin is definitely not expecting because he hasn't been throwing that lead punch. It doesn't land. As you can see, he blocks it. But what does Brooke do beautifully? He moves off the line after throwing it, then controls Golovkin and pulls his guard down to try to land that left uppercut. Beautiful boxing. Even though it doesn't work out, that's not the point. The fact that he's doing these techniques, right? So if he did this three or four times, he's gonna pick up the timing, he's gonna pick up Golovkin's timing, and he's gonna be able to execute this strategy and actually land the shots. You know, and that's what you have to do in the ring. You know, um, I, I don't, I don't wanna talk too much about that, so I'll, I'll move on from that. But right after, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. So boom, uppercut misses it but then beautifully lands the right hand right after, takes another angle, and then throws this left hook. And what does he do? He misses wide, right? Doesn't even touch Golovkin's uh, gloves, right? What does he do after? Beautiful boxing from both of them. They are both anticipating the follow-up punch. Brooke is anticipating the counter because he missed, and he doesn't have any control of Golovkin. So what does he do? He uses his head movement and ducks down. Uh, and Golovkin very smartly ducks down too to get away from what could be a right hand because he doesn't have any control over Brook either. So moving on. Oh, man. And now Golovkin uses the same little tactic, right? Shoots the jab, has his right hand ready to catch a jab or catch the hook. You know, great static defense from him. Ducks down. And now Brooke doesn't know if it's in a right uppercut. Brooke doesn't know if it's a right hand to the body. Brooke doesn't know if it's a straight right hand, but it's none of those. It's a right hand that goes around the guard, uh, and he's able to land it right on his jaw. You know, great job from Golovkin. And this is why I also think that Golovkin is going to, or Canelo is going to have a very hard time countering uh, Golovkin is because right after he throws that right hand, right, he's complete position, he could throw any right hand that he wants, and if Canelo makes the wrong counter, right, he's gonna eat a big shot, right? It's boxing, you're gonna get hit. So what is Canelo gonna do after that? He's gonna throw another counter, right? No, he's not. Because right after that, what does Golovkin do? He controls him with his right hand to create space. The same hand that he just punched Brook in the face with, he hits him with it and then controls him to create space so that he can land this left hook. You know, beautiful boxing from Golovkin. And that's gonna have that's gonna have a huge impact on the course of the fight between him and him and Canelo is his ability to punch <coughs> to punch and then control his opponent, 
to punch and take an angle and move off the line and throw another punch, or his ability to probe a punch and get you out of position to walk into another shot. And if you guys watch the, the film study I do on him versus Liam Smith, excuse me, Liam Smith also has a lot of success during the course of their fight when Canelo gets on the ropes using probes, using feints, and also using like a really high level uh, block removal, right? Just putting his just putting his own left hand excuse me guys um, just putting his own left hand on top of on top of um, Canelo's uh, left glove, pulling it down and then landing a right hand, you know um, and I'm not sure if Golovkin is going to use tactics like that too uh, we see that it works against Canelo uh, sometimes, you know, he does make some decent adjustments in that regard, knowing what Liam Smith is trying to do. Um, sorry, guys, I'm checking my phone. Um, but, but Liam Smith had a lot of success when Canelo would get on the ropes, in spite of the fact that he couldn't hurt Canelo. He could land punches, and I don't think that Golovkin is going to have the same problem of not being able to hurt Canelo. But anyway, getting back into the fight... Golovkin gives him a little feint with the right hand and gets Brooke to walk into a shot. And again, you know, this feint takes no energy, right? He just sticks his right glove out for a second, and Brooke has to respect it, right? Just like when when Golovkin was getting Brooke into the, the corner, he had to respect the left hook when he wasn't ready for it, and he tried to... And it just allowed... Um, it just allowed him to get a positional advantage to get out of the corner, right? And in the same regard, Brooks not in a position to counter as he's moving around, right? He's not in a position to counter, so he tries to duck it and roll the shot and winds up walking into that left hand. It's not a hard punch, but that's not the point. Ooh, good job from Brook there. And again, really great eyes. Even though he gets caught, he's able to counter him. And I'm not sure it lands, but he's able to counter and get under the right hand from Golovkin. And this is really interesting, right? Throws the right hand, shoots off that angle, throws the left hand, closes the distance away from the counter, right, by moving off the line. Um, just another reason why Canelo's going to have a hard time countering him, right? Shoots the right hand, he's in front of him, now he moves, takes an angle to the side. Now he's all the way over there. We saw where he was just a second ago. Now he's able to throw the left hand, get under the counter, and then control him, and then you know, close the distance so that he's not able to, uh, Brooks not able to counter him. Do, do, do. Good job from Brook again. Not getting stuck to fighting on the line, right? That was one of the problems he where he would stop on the line. And in this case, he doesn't even really stop. He's able to catch him with the left hook. Tries a right hand again. Oh, man. Good job from Golovkin here. So shoots that jab, that same one. Ducks down under a possible counter. And look at Brook. Look at how he goes to block the right hand because he thinks it's coming. And walks right into that left hand right there. Very sneaky. Golovkin is very sneaky. Using He's able to set up so many punches off this little technique. And it looks like it's so... It looks like it's so one-dimensional, right? Like, I gave a lot of criticism to Errol Spence and his fight leading up to fighting Brook because he would, he would basically do the same technique every time, and he would throw only, only two left hands. You know, it was either a left hand to the body or a left hand to the head. And what he would do is he would flash his right hand out uh, twice, then take lead foot dominance, and then throw that left hand. And that was, that was it. And that's why Brook had so much success against against Errol Spence because he didn't Errol Spence didn't know how to he didn't know what other punches he could set up off of that that technique and and it allowed it made him predictable for Brook, right? And in this case, Brook is like, "Oh, this Golovkin guy, he's so predictable, right? Oh, I'm going to counter him. Oh, I'm going to catch that shot." You know, but but Golovkin is very smart. He knows all of his avenues of attack and is able you know, and this is another thing. This is this is part of why having craft is so important, right? When you when you have craft and like 
people talk about this like probably in the wrong sense, but when you have a game plan that you're always trying to impose on your opponent, and your opponent is playing that game with you, right? When you get them to fight your fight, and this is what that means, right? To fight your fight, um, you already people have already thrown so many punches at you when you're in this stance. They've thrown all these counters at you. They've done all these things to you. If they're fighting your fight, you know the counters because people have hit you with it in sparring, in real fights. But this is the first time that you've had to really combat that style so you don't know where all the extra avenues of attack are. You don't know when you need to, when your opponent is setting up a punch or when your opponent is setting up punch A, B, or C. You don't know all of those different variations. And this is why having craft is so important. You know, fighters like um, Roman Gonzalez, right? Chocolatito. That's craft. You know, his ability to fight on the inside. And when he gets his opponents fighting his fight, he's able to, he knows all the angles. He knows where the openings are. He knows when to control you. He knows, he knows what your counters are to him and when he's fighting on the inside that's why he has so much success is because he gets everyone to fight his fight they're working in his craft it's like uh if you guys were artists right and you know one guy's a painter and one guy's a sculptor and he's like okay we're gonna have a competition between these two arts who's the better artist and it works out to that if you get your opponent fighting your fight, they're competing with you, making, if you're the sculptor, you're making them sculpt things and they've never sculpted before. And you're getting to sculpt and you're a master at sculpting, right? But if, if you get them, if they get you fighting their fight, right, and they're a painter, now all of a sudden the sculptor has to paint and they don't know, they don't have the tools to do that. They're not as used to it. They don't know the little tricks, the shortcuts, they don't know. You know, and that's all I'm saying about this is, is um, um, that's why Errol, that's why Errol Spence, right? He's so young, he's so green. You know, he has a lot of opportunity for growth, right? To figure out his craft, um, but but that's where it comes from, right? Experience. You know, maybe Errol Spence is going to be so much better of a fighter in his next fight. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but that's an interesting thing about Canelo is that I don't think he has that craft either. You know, his offenses are very. They're very limited, you know, it's that lead left hand, right? He flashes it out there and then he throws a left hook to the body or a right hook-ish to the body or he comes up the middle with a, with an uppercut, you know? But it, but it all stems also off of one kind of feint. Um, and that could be, that counts, kind of maybe sounds a little critical too because um, Canelo or because Golovkin's kind of is too. Um, I do think that Golovkin's is a little better. He does a lot more things with his, right? The head movement, the shuffling forward, the changing his hips so he can um, uh, he can shift forward or shift backward or take an angle. I just think he's, his offense is just so much more dynamic than, um, than Canelo's. And now this is beautiful right here. Golovkin kind of opens up with that wild hook. And look at how Brooke takes a step back and he's able to control Golovkin and then land this right hand over the top. That is beautiful boxing, you guys. And this is a skill, this is a skill that I do not think that Canelo has. You know, Canelo, for all intents and purposes, is a very clean fighter. You know, not to say this is dirty, this is not dirty, but Canelo, for the most part, uses his hands to feint and then uses his hands to punch, right? He doesn't use his hands to clinch. He doesn't use his hands to control his opponent, for the most part. Um, and um, he'll rely on like I call it kind of like C level stuff, you know, like your average world champion. Well, oh, they just use their head movement. They just use their rolling. They just use their Philly shell. They just use their, you know. Whereas a good fighter like like Golovkin, after he throws a punch, he's vulnerable to a counter, right? Unless in those times where he gets his hand on you and controls you, and he's able to you know, push off of you and throw another punch, or he faints you and makes you think another punch is coming while he takes an angle, right? And that's not stuff that, that Canelo likes, well, I don't know if he likes to do them, but he just doesn't do them in his professional fights. You know, I don't watch any sparring tape, maybe he's holding back, you know, maybe he knows more than he, he's letting on. Maybe he learned more from that Mayweather fight than we think. Um, but this is not a technique I've ever seen him use in his fights, um, and it just works brilliantly. And one of the reasons why this is so effective against Golovkin is after he throws this shot, what is he very likely to do? What have we already seen him do in this fight many times? 
he ducks down and he would take an angle like he's stepping with his right hand or his right foot he's stepping to his right but he but because brook puts him off balance it puts him he's not able to completely shift and move completely off the line to where he wants to and then brook is able to catch him with the shot you know he's able to break golovkin's rhythm by controlling him not allow him to take an angle and catch him with a great shot uh, and I don't think that that's something that Canelo is going to be able to do. What's up, man? So here we got Brooke finally getting out of his his little shell and opening up. And it's really interesting because if you, <laughs> one of my coworkers just walked by. Um, yeah, I make these videos at work and shit. Um, if you if you look at look at Golovkin, he kind of shells up, right? And you wonder why Golovkin is letting him do this, right? Is is it the the hand speed, right? Is he allowing Golovkin? Is he allowing Brook to open up so he can counter him, right? So he, like he just tried to counter him there. It, does he is he trying to create openings? Is he tired because he just fought for two minutes, leading the pace, right? Who knows, right? It could be that he's a little tired. It could be that now he's thinking, hmm, what's going to work next? Hmm, what's going to, you know, who knows? But um, that aside, uh, Brick does a good job of setting up his punches here, right? Shoots that fake jab, fake jab, and then goes around when he knows that Golovkin is going to shell up. And this is the, probably, aside from that uppercut that he landed in the last round, this is the most success he's actually had landing his shots um, during the course of the fight. Right? And I'm not sure if that, that right hand lands. It might sneak through. I'm not sure. I can't really tell. But that doesn't look like it's super clean, right? Fakes him with that one and lands both of those shots. You know, and Brooke doing a good job of going around the guard, getting in between the guard. And those are all things that Canelo is really good at. Um, he does know how to find those holes and land in those punches, right? So if Golovkin does choose to shell up like this, I do expect Canelo to land a lot of punches. Um, but but we'll have to figure out, you know, if that's something that Brook is letting him or Golovkin is letting him do, if he's setting up for a shot or what what the deal is, right? But um, then he starts, you know, missing. You know, Golovkin's able to roll these shots and get under them. And then Brooke does something really beautiful. I fucking love this. So what do we know about Golovkin when Golovkin gets on the line with Brooke, right? Well, when Brooke shoots a jab, Golovkin tries to counter that jab and take that jab away, right? So Brooke ducks down, shoots the jab, not a real jab, and Golovkin gets his guard out. He gets his... his um, his, his right hand in front of his face, right? So he can catch another punch and then shoots his own jab. But because Brooke didn't commit to that jab, he's able to land a beautiful right hand. Just beautiful. Probes him right here, boom, and then goes over the top of the right hand. Uh, and that's how you set traps, right? We've seen throughout the course of this fight so far, Golovkin, take, Golovkin land numerous jabs against Brooke by getting him on the line and shooting that jab or getting him on the line and waiting for Brooke to shoot a jab so he can counter the jab with his own jab. And Brooke sets a trap with that information that he has about his opponent and is able to take advantage of what Brooke's doing, or of what, Gol what Golovkin's doing. Excuse me. Um, and I don't, I'm, again, the exact same s technique right here. Golovkin shoots his jab, or Brooke shoots his jab, and then Golovkin counters his jab. You know, I'm not sure what, what Brooke thought was gonna happen right there after he already tested his theory, right? His hypothesis, hmm, I think if I shoot my jab, Golovkin will shoot his jab. And then he throws the right hand over the top, but he kind of, you know, lets Golovkin hit him in the face in this instance because he already has the information, right? But anyway, I wonder if Canelo is going to be able to make these kinds of adjustments. To, to be fair, Golovkin, or Canelo, not that he's fought like really soft, fighters, right? Like Arizlandi Lara, nobody wants to fight that guy, right? But was that a real fight? I don't know. Um, we didn't have to see very many adjustments in that fight because it was so, I don't want to say slow paced, but there just wasn't enough action to make enough adjustments to figure it out. Um, but is, is Canelo going to be able to set traps like that for Golovkin? You know, 
I don't know. I'll have to rewatch my videos and see when I, before I do my final prediction about because uh, I made those videos like three months ago or four months ago before my channel got banned for copyright stuff. But um, uh, we'll have to see if Canelo is able to make adjustments like that. <laughs> I remember earlier when he was skating down the road and uh, Brooke was out of position and Golovkin gave him that fake right hand? Just that feint right there. And Brooke tried to duck it and, and roll under and he was able to land that shot. Brooks showing that he's learning from those mistakes. Oh. And I wonder if this is just a case of him being tired now. You know, because there's not really... He gets on the line with him. Oh, interesting. He's in southpaw position. I wonder why he's in a southpaw position. I didn't re I didn't recognize it at first. I actually, I just made this video. Um, like, well, I guess by now it's like a half an hour ago. But my computer restarted before I ended the video. Uh, so I had to remake it. But Brooks in, in a southpaw position. Now, we definitely know that Canelo's not going to do that. But, uh, you know, yeah, Brooke, don't do that. <laughs> That's all we're going to talk about that. <laughs> uh, Golovkin shoots that jab, ducks down a possible counter, and then controls him. Look how he gets his arm on his right arm. And he probably could have pushed off there and created space to land some punches. But he's probably tired at the end of the round, too. Ooh. Now, leading with the right hand instead of the jab. Right? Very tricky. And it does look like it lands pretty cleanly. Um, and even though he doesn't set it up, he has the precedent of so many jabs. And so many shifts and so many left hooks that when he finally opens up with the right hand... Brooke has no idea. He's like a deer in headlights. and winds up just getting kind of cracked with it. Ooh. <laughs> really interesting because, again, we saw the... Ooh, does he land the right hand, though? No, he doesn't. Um, really interesting that Brooke goes back to this, right? Because the feint is good. The feint works, right? He gets Golovkin to commit to the, commit to the counter, right? But he doesn't take advantage of that knowledge. He doesn't take advantage of the fact that he fainted him and got him to react. And I don't, maybe he thought that Golovkin was going to react in a different way. You know, I don't think so, you know, because he's very, very consistently shown that he likes to catch the jab and then shoot his own jab, right? So kind of just a fail from Brooke in that instance, but very smart after, after he gets hit to duck down and move his head, you know. But yeah, interesting round. Oh man, I fucking love that too. This is going to be something that I think is going to be really effective against Canelo. Because Canelo, he likes to stay on the line. He likes to be have his fancy defense. He likes to, you know, turn and roll shots and look like he's, you know, everything that people think Mayweather is, you know. And Glovkin's able to just throw this left hook that he's thrown a thousand times in this fight. Not really even have to commit to it. And then just launch a right hand into it. Beautiful boxing. You know, shows him the left hand and then cracks him with the right. And then what does he do after? Boom. Cracks him. Takes that right hand and puts it on him and controls him so he can't counter. Create space and allow him to throw his own shots. You know, beautiful boxing from Golovkin. And then he shells up, you know. Why does he start letting Brooke throw punches? I wonder. And I can't really tell what Brooke try or what Golovkin tries to do there, aside from land that left hook at the end. But um, really interesting, right, you guys? The question will be at the end is, is Canelo going to be able to make the adjustments necessary? Is Canelo going to be able to find ways to counter against Golovkin? Because we know Golovkin is going to be leading. We know he's going to be looking to make Canelo react to him so he can land his counters. We know that. We, everyone's expecting that. I don't think anyone's really expecting Canelo to be the aggressor, right? He might be the full aggressor, right? Like come out with some flashy jabs uh, that might give Can uh, Golovkin uh, problems early. But I'm not sure. You know, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, we still got two more rounds to do on this. And then I'll be making some other videos. I might do some keys to victory and stuff uh, for this fight. 
those notoriously don't get very many views, so we'll see. <laughs> but, um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, also, I have like a little uh, a faux film study uh, of Golovkin and Jacobs and uh, Liam Smith versus Canelo. It's, uh, it's kind of a promo video, faux film study, like with the song and intro or whatever. It's kind of a cool video I made um, that shows a couple of the patterns that are also going to arise in the fight over um, between these two and how they're going to fight over uh, control of you know the space between them and, um, and who has control of using their jab. Right, who has lead hand dominance? Um, so check that out too. I'll, after I like, I'll make a playlist and I'll put that in these videos too. Um, but anyway, let me know what you guys think. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks, guys.